Great. Great. Well, thank you all for coming. Um, yeah, this was set up from Good Food Lewisham, which is part of Lewisham Local. Um, it's a food project. It's a food network. And we, we, we aim to tackle all the issues regarding food and the positives and the problems as well. And one of the, one of the problems facing the planet and people is food waste. Um, and it's costing businesses a lot of money. So Andrea is um, one of our steering group members and she's an ambassador for Guardians of Grub. And she has done some like really in-depth learning she works at the Oxo Tower and um, they've put this into practice and they've managed to save a lot of money. So she is the expert. So it's great to have Andrea here to sort of share her learning of how she's managed to like help the Oxo Tower with reducing food waste. So um, Andrea, can I take it over to you now? Sure. Um, pleasure meeting you all. I'm going to try sharing my screen. We've uh, tried this a little bit earlier, so we will establish if it all works. Um, well, I think you might not see the full screen yet, but hopefully you do now. Um, can someone just uh, confirm that you do see the full screen? I not quite see. full screen at the moment. Not quite full screen. What do you see? Do you see the presentation mode? Yeah. You can see the uh, slides down the side. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but you still can't. You still see the slides down the side, right? Yeah, um, but it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Um, let me stick with this. If you go to the bottom bar, uh, <clears throat> you can see some little icons. Uh, uh, yeah, I just uh, thought I stopped sharing and try again. Let's try. You need to. You need to request to be a presentation. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. That's great. There we go. Um, second time lucky. Um, thank you for your patience. Um, as you can see, I'm asking um, something in that uh, very first slide, um, which hopefully allows us to um, speak to each other a little bit more about um, what possible um, things we might encounter when we are um, uh, looking at food waste. Um, I will put into the chat what I last uh, wasted first, um, and maybe someone else will join me. And this is just um, almost like an icebreaker to kind of let us start thinking about um, how often or what the last item might have been we've been throwing away. And um, in my case, it was a banana peel um, pretty much this morning. Um, I see someone has uh, thrown away rice um, and some onion peels. I had to throw away some silk and tofu yesterday because it froze at the back. Oh no. Um, and the consistency had changed. Nothing on my side. Ali, you're really good. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what we like to hear. It's, it's early uh, this morning, so I haven't done anything. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so you've just been lucky, basically. <laughs> yeah, I didn't cook this morning. That's why I normally would, and then I would have um, onions or garlic peelings uh, or something like that. Perfect. I'm gonna move on. And one thing um, which worked already really nicely is uh, that someone unmuted, and I'd encourage you um, to unmute yourself um, if you have any questions. Um, this is just uh, continuing in the vein of um, getting us uh, a little bit more relaxed um, because I'd like us to have an open conversation about food waste and hopefully make this as useful for you as possible. Um, if you ask me how I feel on a dog scale today, um, I think I feel a little bit mischievous like number four. Um, uh, if anyone wants to um, join and uh, tell either in the chat um, uh, which picture they would choose and why, um, that would be wonderful. Um, number one for me. <laughs> it's Monday, I feel tired. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Laura? Well, I want to go with number seven, just because it does look like my dog as well. <laughs> Simone? I'm I'm done number six because I I was feeling like Ellie quite tired, but I treat myself to a coffee which I don't normally have in a week, and so now oh. I'm nice and uh, caffeinated and awake. So I'll enjoy it while it lasts. 
Maybe that's what I need. <laughs> How about you, Savannah? I think that I feel like four and I look like four. You look like four. Yeah, I, I would have said uh, four. Look at the plants. I can see. <laughs> yeah, no, I, well, I, I, I slept okay for the first time last night, but I st I'm still a bit sick. So I'm like, Mm. <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully, um, this will be a wonderful uh, start to the morning. And um, since you're clearly interested in the topic, is there anyone I've missed? Um, because there might have been people joining, and I can see four screens on my screen, but I'm not sure if anyone else is joined and who would like to share how they feel on a dog scale. Before I move on, can't hear anyone. Um, so unless I get a veto, I hope I can move on. Um. Just a wee introduction, um, in addition to um, what Laura said, um, years ago um, I trained as a chef and that's how I came to the UK. Um, and I worked for uh, a few years um, in a hotel uh, in London, central London. And um, now I work at uh, Harvey Nichols and I'm the chair of the sustainability forum. Um, and uh, as part of that, I'm the corporate social responsibility lead for the Austin Tower restaurant bar and grocery and um, I've been there for about eight years so I've done a range of different projects um, around the broader idea of sustainability um, but food waste um, at uh, the business became really really of interest to us in 2018 and uh, that was on the back of a project the Sustainable Restaurant Association hosted called um, Food Waste Bad Taste and since then, the restaurant has done a number of different things to reduce our food waste. And we've done that pretty successfully. I'm not saying uh, we are done because this is an ongoing project. And in 2020, I became a Guardians of Prague ambassador. And I will explain what that might mean. Um, and uh, I'm now also um, studying part-time at the UK Food Systems Centre for doctoral training. And my PhD research is linked to food waste and catering. Um, just to give you a bit of an idea what the outline of this presentation is, um, you, as I said, can stop me at any point and ask questions. This should be as useful as possible to anyone who's making time for this. And I acknowledge there is actually two people in here who are not specifically catering businesses, but um, kind of linked to catering in, this way, in some way. So if you feel that this is, not bringing you the best value and you want to go into more of a conversation specifically you to your context please feel free to unmute and ask questions or um, kind of bring up a concern and we can converse about that um, because uh, this is probably the best use of your time rather than me talking at you um, but what i had planned is to kind of give you an overview, uh, overview of how food waste is currently conceived in the um, in the UK and globally, um, maybe a little bit about the impact of food waste and then going into um, what, uh, food way, uh, what food service and catering actually means and how diverse it is, which I think is really important when we think about um, how to tackle food waste because the solutions will be different in different parts of the sector. And then explain what Guardians of Grub are and um, show you a little bit uh, of the features the Guardians of Grub uh, website has and what you can um, use there um, and hopefully take a little bit the barrier away of um, accessing it. And then hopefully um, we uh, hear a little bit of your experiences and um, your challenges and maybe we can um, brainstorm some solutions um, if you haven't done so yourself yet. And if uh, we get that far and it's of value, I can share a case study um, from the Oxford Tower restaurant specific to our afternoon tea uh, food waste. Um, so that's what I'm planning. And um, I've already mentioned that I um, really want this to be as useful as possible to you. So um, you are not in a school setting where you have to be quiet. Please, um, at any point, um, either if you feel like it, raise the hand, uh, the virtual or the uh, personal hand, and uh, then uh, unmute and uh, ask a question. Um, and I do think uh, you probably have more knowledge, um, maybe even more knowledge than I have. Um, so please feel free to share that as well. Um, that makes this conversation a lot richer. Um, and hopefully um, we can connect the insights from each other. Um, so yeah, um, let's start with testing our knowledge. Um, 
maybe you can put it in the chat or you write it down for yourself if you prefer. Um, how many tons of food waste do you think are wasted in the UK every year? Um, we've got two people who may know that already. I should I know it. I can't. I can't remember. <laughs> do you many want to have a guess? many tons, but I can't remember. Do you want to have a guess? Educated guess. I I might have an answer to the second question, but uh, okay. How about the second question? It's about seven hundred pounds per household. Yeah. yeah. And uh, anyone an idea of uh, that that CO two by the way um, equivalent um, is uh, basically how much um, greenhouse gases? Oh, I can see um, eight hundred thousand uh, tons. Savannah says um, three billion. Uh, money wasted around 700 pounds um any other guesses no um so yeah and then the c2 uh, co2 equivalent um from one ton of food waste um it's quite a significant amount which is um probably where my interest goes today um and luckily i've prepared if we can move on um few of the answers um so just to put food waste as a problem into context um, there's about one third of food waste uh, produced, uh, of one third of food produced for human consumption is lost uh, or wasted globally. And that amounts uh, to about 1.3 billion tons per year. And that's a, a, a reference from the FAO. And then 6.7 6 million tons of food is wasted every year in the UK. So a little less than the um, uh, no, a little more than uh, 800,000 tons, quite a bit more. And the cost uh, to the UK, the estimated cost is about 10.2 uh, billion a year. And um, uh, Silvana, when you said uh, 700 pounds, um, this was the figure, I think, from before COVID. Um, so the figure I put in there is a more recent figure um, from REP. Um, they now think that we've actually done a little bit of work and have moved on and their belief is um, closer to 250 to 400 pounds per household. Um, but as you can see, that's the 21 figure that was before the food cost uh, uh, increased again. So it's a big um, change. Yeah, Silvana, you responded, um, but you were mute. So I'm not sure whether you want to unmute and share. With said, before the cost of living crisis. Exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah, it's... Um, it was before the uh, cost of living crisis and therefore um, somewhat different. And then, yeah, if food waste um, and food loss were a country, they would uh, basically be the third biggest emitter of greenhouse gas emissions um, in the world just after the US and China. So um, you can see that the global warming impact uh, is quite significant. And the trouble is that only 69% of, uh, or 69 of Britons uh, don't know um, that food waste contributes to climate change. And food waste, of course, contributes to climate change in many ways. Um, one is uh, through the production when it uh, actually is being produced and then not used. Um, so all the energy, all the resources which went into um, contribute to greenhouse gases. But then a second time it contributes to greenhouse gases when it's um, potentially put in landfill and starts decomposing and produces um, predominantly methane. Um, a very potent greenhouse gas, um, which leads to global warming. Um, and it's estimated that about 8 to 10 percent of global greenhouse gas emissions per year are associated with food, with food loss and food waste. And um, the 25 million tons of CO2 um, of food waste in the UK um, are equivalent to one in three cars on uh, UK roads. Um, so again, quite a big um, amount. And um, beyond kind of the, you know, the numbers game of food waste, there's other issues. Um, and I'm sure Ellie would agree, having worked uh, with Food Cycle, um, the fact that people are struggling with food um, and getting food on the table um, is an ethical issue. And um, one could even go further. There's probably gender inequalities um, linked to um, ultimately food insecurity for sure. And um, therefore, food waste um, potentially is just, a, just another layer of these inequalities. Um, and then anyone who's ever uh, worked in uh, waste and in food waste uh, will have come across something called 
the waste hierarchy or the food waste hierarchy in this case. And what this is trying to tell you is, is that there is different stages where food waste could be prevented. Um, so, and all the impact of food waste could be prevented. So the best way is um, not to produce the food waste in the first place. That means um, not buying things and putting them in the fridge and then forgetting about them. Um, not cooking more than you need, um, potentially not growing more than you need as well. Um, if, however, your um, calculations and your best management practices didn't help, uh, the next best option is to redistribute to people. And that's really where the likes of food cycle fall in, um, your all use, your um, too good to go apps, um, they all kind of touch that area. And if the food can't be redistributed to people, um, you could feed it uh, to animals. And uh, in the UK, it's slightly more difficult because um, food waste fed to pigs is not really um, legally a thing anymore. Um, but there is still small ways where you can potentially get your animals, um, your pets, um, get feeding off um, food waste. Um, that could be uh, some wilted salad uh, towards your turtles and that sort of thing. Um, Recycling, um, the next uh, stage down. Um, so I mentioned that food waste when it decomposes in landfill produces greenhouse gas emissions. So to counteract that, uh, you can send it to anaerobic digestion. And what would happen there is um, basically in a um, state of uh, no oxygen, bacteria start um, decomposing the food waste and create a gas and that uh, can be used as energy uh, production. Um, so therefore, it kind of counteracts these greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and then the next option, um, almost on the same part, is waste composting. Um, probably most important from the perspective of thinking about soil health and soil regeneration. Um, but it produces the um, greenhouse gases. Um, and then uh, the next stage would be incineration of waste. So basically uh, burning the food waste and creating energy from that. And the last and worst possible option to do with uh, food waste would be disposing it into um, the sewer, into um, landfill, um, because that's where it would start decomposing. And then I had prepared this slide um, just to kind of point out that catering businesses are very different. And um, in the picture, you can see in the pictures, you can see um, a pub um, where food waste is probably I would think probably most driven through something called plate waste. Um, and then you can see in the center um, a room service trolley um, of a hotel. Um, again, I would think there's a decent amount of problem with um, plate waste probably in the hospita hospitality as in hotels. Um, and then uh, on the right hand side, you can see um, a hospital. Um, on the middle of it, um, you can see a school catering context and then on the right hand side a restaurant context and um, the type of waste and the way the catering works is very different in each of these um, contexts. Um, some are very large scale um, where you have procurement teams which are buying tons of food and prepare that for the year and then you've got um, smaller businesses where literally the chef might be in charge of buying the food, uh, preparing the food and looking potentially after the food waste and that is quite important from the perspective of Guardians of Grub um, because the people who are in charge of buying the food and um, preparing the food are probably the most likely people who should be involved in kind of starting a conversation around tackling food waste. Um, Can I make a then, comment? Can I make a course. comment? Yeah, if you go back on it. the other slide, is uh, in unfortunately in Lewisham we I don't collect food waste yet uh, from businesses. Mm -hmm. However, we have now uh, about 60 primary schools that we collect food waste from. And all mm -hmm. the food waste in Lotion goes to anaerobic digestion. Mm -hmm. And then they capture methane and, and goes mm -hmm. uh, the power, energy and power goes into the grid as well. But I'm quite pleased that we get that from schools. And uh, we're hoping that soon we will be able to offer food collections from businesses, whatever size, because there's so much wastage. And that goes goes to into the refuse. Obviously, the refuse is incinerated, but I think food waste could have 
different ways of being disposed of. Um, we used to compost it, and nowadays um, it's only garden waste that turns into compost. So mm. that's yeah, it. My, my very thing. valuable. And, um, and yeah, there's there's a lot more work to be done. And I guess the awareness raising part of the Guardians of Rock campaign really kind of taps into this. Um, I think for me, it's hard to imagine because ever since I've worked at OXO, um, all our food waste has gone to um, anaerobic digestion. Um, but you're right, uh, just because my experience says that this is what businesses uh, do, um, doesn't mean that every business is already on it. And um, yeah, it's good that... Uh, I mean, it's hard they... enough to get them to recycle, to be honest, because mm -hmm. that's, I mean... Um... Our job here, it's it's not uh, it's residential, it's not businesses, but yeah. we somehow get involved with business uh, side of it as well and get them to recycle is very difficult. And then moving to food waste, perhaps food waste is a bit easier because you have one bin, you just scrape everything into it without packaging, obviously. Um, but um, people, I don't know, it's still, I think lotion... Obviously, that's uh, the experience I have here. It seems to be quite hard to change people's behavior. Not impossible, but it seems to be quite hard work, even residential, to, um, um, for example, food waste, because people can put everything in food waste um, yeah. and in the, in the bin, and they still think that they can't put this or the other. Um, if you compost, obviously, you can't put cooked food, but you know, there's always alternatives for whatever you produce because the idea is not to produce waste. For example, mm -hmm. I don't have waste of cooked food. Very rarely I have one thing. As I don't eat meat, I don't have bones or anything else. But uh, most of my stuff go into compost. Mm -hmm. I live in a flat, so I don't have an option. But there you are. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> No, thank you for sharing. Um, this is the point of this. Look, um, if if I talk at you, um, I don't think you will get half as much out if we talk with each other. Simone, you've got your hand up. Yeah, thanks. There was a question for for Ellie. That's great to hear that um, you're already working with sixty primary schools in terms of that the um, collecting waste for anaerobic digestion. I just wondered what happens with that at the end, um, because I think yeah, it's, it's certainly through our our network. After the after the end of the process of anaerobic digestion? Yeah, where, where does at the end of that, where does the waste, does it form a compost that we could utilize in other spaces? Or... Okay, anaerobic digestion, um, because the process it goes through, uh, it, it, it generates uh, heat and power. So the main gas that it generates is methane, uh, therefore it goes and produces energy. Uh, at the end of the process, there is, um, a liquid, a liquid fertilized digestate is called. Uh, it's quite a viscous, black, um, very stinky <laughs> liquid, which is used for uh, as fertilizer. So it's for mm -hmm. farming. So farmers use that, uh, and apparently it's, it's very sought after. We don't have yeah. any involvement in where it goes, who buys it, or any like that. We just take the our food there. It goes to East London um, uh, Bio or something. Sorry, I forgot the name of it. It's East London. We we just say East London. Um, and that's an, an aerobic digestion plant. So it's quite central in a way, if you think about it. Um, but it doesn't really stink outside because it goes into containers uh, it's contained inside and the process goes in because it's without oxygen so it has to be kind of sealed therefore there is no smell and the digestate as well only if you're near it you can smell it but not when you're on the plant you can't smell it that's really helpful thank you i guess we're just thinking from our side of good food lewisham we've got a network and particularly helen who's on the call there's a network of local community gardens many of which need kind of compost so if there's ways and we can always help with linking if there's opportunities so yeah that's something i we'd, we'd i do i do give um workshops on introduction to composting if you guys interested at any point um and uh, i always talk about the food as well at home so you can a lot of it can most of it basically can go into the compost because i always encourage people not to produce 
um, cooked food ways you should eat and everything. Obviously, there are certain things you can't avoid, but mm. that'd be great. Um, yeah, perhaps if Helen, are you happy to? To liaise with Ellie about we could organise something for the food growing network and I don't know if you do them in person but certainly through food cycle you know we perhaps could oh no I do it in person because I I show people about the, the compost sorry um Andrea <laughs> but we can yeah, uh, Simon super fascinating actually mm -hmm. uh, Simon we can talk about it separately and I can explain a little bit more how I do it um and uh, yeah but. In terms of anaerobic digestion, that's pretty much what it is. Right, thank you. And just an example, um, Andrew, I chance to, yeah, we, with food cycle, obviously we we use um, we collect all of our food from local supermarkets, so a lot of that would be about to be going, um, yeah, uh, past its best before or used by date. Um, anything we don't use for the meal, we pass on to our partner project Cat, uh, Catford uh, Fridge who give out bags of food for um, we have 80 guests at the moment um, but anything now um, because there's not a composting or there's not even recycling at the Catford Irish um, Centre which is unfortunate but we now have a guest who uh, takes some of our compost as much as he can, our kind of like veg and fruit scraps as much as he can carry he takes back to St Mary's um, Gar community garden and um yeah we, we do something similar at the office our our compost from the office now goes there as well and they they're desperate for that because they only have green and brown um compost they don't have that kind yeah. of food and fruit which is really helpful so perhaps we could organize yeah a composting workshop at food cycle as well would be great for guests sounds like you've got some composting heroes <laughs> <laughs> um so this slide was really to get us talking about um, which uh, which kind of context brought you here today. Um, I happen to know from Ellie because uh, she's introduced herself uh, right at the beginning and Silvana, of course. I don't know if there's anyone else in the call now who wants to add um, maybe what their food waste story is, what brought them today here and um, how they hope this um, conversation might help them beyond what I can um, just throw at you. Feel free to unmute if that is, uh, or write it in the chat box, whatever works best for you. I think it's very useful to know what's uh, happening around. Sometimes mm. you kind of get uh, in a tunnel vision um, because you're just so sucked into the what you do and so much going on happening around which is fantastic um, and I think food I was reading something very briefly this morning the news that uh, um, an environmentalist I think he's, uh, he said that by 2050 there will be hardly any food and it will be a massive so society will collapse basically by that I don't know if anyone saw that I haven't read the whole thing but it looks really Gary. Pessim pessimistic, yeah. Um, um, but who knows? I mean, I, because I have an allotment, someone said to me through at uh, the time of COVID that there were some conversations that people would start invading allotments to start taking food from people. And that might happen because, you know, too many people on the planet, it's not enough land and the way things are going. Um, I don't know. Hopefully not. I hope we always will find a solution. Might not be the best solution, but uh, there will always be a way out of making things keep going, basically. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm with you on this. I'm going to move on. Um, if um, the next bit doesn't really hit the spot, um, give me a shout, put your arms and your hands up. Um, so I can possibly um, stop. But the aim was to introduce what Guardians of Grub are and kind of break down um, how Guardians of Grub um, break down food waste because they do, do break it down in different components. Um, and then also um, the current impact of uh, food waste and catering and uh, the food uh, service industry and how it could be addressed. Um, so that's the 
that that's kind of um, probably the most important uh, thing to consider when we are thinking about food waste, um, particularly when we think about what are we possibly able to do with food waste. So um, there is a distinguish uh, or a distinction between what is called edible versus inedible. And I very consciously choose, chose two things um, I come across a lot. Um, in our business, we still make um, stock from bones and bones uh, will probably be classed as inedible. Um, and when we are recording food waste, um, we wouldn't record what is called inedible food waste. So um, in our business, when we've made stock, we remove the uh, bones from the weight um, of the food waste because it's classed as inedible and that's not what is being tracked within the food waste category. Um, so maybe worthwhile pointing out. And then um, I mentioned uh, that the last item food item I wasted was banana peel. And that's a interesting one because there are cultures where banana peel is very much eaten. Um, and then there is, um, I would say, the kind of European culture where the banana peel is often wasted. Um, obviously a very good uh, ingredient in a compost, I would say, to my knowledge. Um, so it has uh, lots and lots of other valuable um, options, um, but it can be cooked as well. So it's quite worth thinking about it. And then um, the next kind of breakdown is um, when uh, food waste is measured in catering, it's, uh, we are looking at preparation waste. So all the waste which happens while we are producing the food, um, the peels, um, any um, kind of uh, bones we might remove um, from uh, meat or um, skin we might remove from uh, meat and animal products, um, that would be classed as preparation waste. It could be whey when we are making cheese because whey would probably not be, um, if it's poured around the drain, you can do lots and lots of things with it. But if it's kind of being poured uh, into the waste, uh, then it would be seen as preparation waste. Um, and then spoilage waste, um, you can see a moldy bread there um, that speaks for itself. So when the food is basically getting to a place where it's either too unpleasant to be eaten by humans or when it becomes a house hazard to be eaten. And then I mentioned that already, plate waste. So that's really the food which comes back from plates of diners, um, of guests at Food Cycle, for example. Um, so this is how Guardians of Rap and um, Rap, who are basically the home of uh, Guardians of Rap, would split it. And the reason why they are splitting it is it makes it somewhat easier to understand where are your hot spots in food waste proper, uh, food waste generation. So if you categorize the areas, it helps you to understand where can you tackle the problem. Um, well, here's a question um, again, does this food waste and catering and the food industry actually matter? Well, about 3.2 billion pounds worth of food um, is wasted, estimated to be wasted in the UK hospitality and food service uh, sector. And um, about 18% of the food you purchase in hospitality um, still goes directly to the bin. And um, this is a, a general uh, number. So for every food, for every kilo of food wasted, um, on average, uh, about 3.39 kilos of uh, CO2 or CO2 equivalent are being produced. Depends a little bit on the composition. Um, uh, I'm sure Ellie could have a word on that. Um, there is quite a, a chemistry to things, um, but yeah, that's the average. Um, and of course, the other thing is food waste also costs resources. Um, the thing we always talk about is cost, um, and maybe more so now than we've done so for years because of the cost of living crisis. But other otherwise, um, food waste also costs us labor cost. Um, so someone produced the food, someone grew the food, someone put time and effort in. Um, cost energy um, to get the food done. And um, there's also water embedded. In the UK, we don't think of this as much um, because we are not a um, drought prone um, country yet. Um, but in other countries of the world, um, that's a really, really important thing to consider. Um, so that's where the impact is. And this is just a chart really from uh, RAP kind of breaking it down again. So they estimated that about one in six meals in the catering industry is currently wasted. So there's really um, huge potential to make a difference. Um, even if we would get up to one in 10 meals um, being wasted, that would be a huge step in hospitality. Um, and this is kind of moving into um, what the tools of Guardians of Rap could do. Um, so 
having worked at the Oxford Tower restaurant for um, all these years, um, I've used this a few times um, for our business. And um, let's see, I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to try to get us to this very website. Um, let's see if I can do this. Give me a moment, I'm trying to move my screen into the right screen here. Okay, um, we might, we might. Um, so I'm sharing with you now, hopefully you can see, uh, tell me if you cannot yet. Um, uh, this is me struggling with uh, two screens. I'm so sorry. Um, can you see um, a screen from Guardians of Grab now? I, I believe you can. So this is basically the yeah, food waste calculator. And you can literally, if you're a food waste uh, a catering business, you can go in here and then um, you kind of, you can make this up. Um, let's say I'm a pup and I serve for a week, um, I'm a decent uh, busy pup. I have about 40 to 50 covers a day, um, makes about 350 um, meals per week. And then um, I explain in which sector I work, um, just that uh, I'm a pup. So I go next. Um, and then I can literally choose how much I would want to save. Um, I've never done any food waste uh, saving before, so I'm really conservative here. I'm going to say I'm going to do 10%. Um, and then I submit this, and then it gives me the potential cost savings for my business, right? Um, this is based on um, statistical um, figures from RAP, um, and uh, it kind of gives businesses an idea that they can have a real impact on their food cost um, by doing by starting to get on top of it. Um, I think what's more interesting is to kind of go through some of the resources. Um, Guardians of Club, I'm going to try to go home. Just so if you go to the homepage for Guardians of Club, this is what you find. Um, they kind of have a lovely website. Um, it needs a little bit of navigating um, and learning how to navigate, but uh, this is probably where the most useful uh, resources sit. Um, one of the resources, uh, which is re recently just been published, um, but I think very useful, is uh, Plate Waste um, Toolkit, which really tries to um, tackle what most catering businesses say is their biggest problem, plate, plate waste. Um, it, it basically kind of hones in on to how can we prevent that our customers feel that they are not getting a good value for money when they're eating with us, um, but equally, how can we stop them from... Um, having yeah having to throw away food beyond giving them doggy boxes um, and then i think the most traditional way and the starting point for most food waste um, programs is to start with this and i've opened it here um, but you can literally download it it's a tracking calculator guide and a tracking calculator you can download it here for free you get to an access sheet it looks very scary um, but really isn't that scary um, I need to actually um, open it differently for us to um, have a little bit more of a play with it. Um, so if I say download file, you might be able to open it in here, if it lets me. It's opening in the other screen, so give me a moment and move it into this screen. Okay, there we are. And the reason why I wanted to show you this is, um, A, it's linked with all the research which goes beyond, um, which I think is here. So you can see um, who has actually helped to create this. It explains the background of the sheet um, in a different tab, but it can give you these charts as well. And if we go, to the data entry sheet. This is probably the most interesting thing. If you're a catering business, and in fact, I've proposed this to a charity which is similar to Food Cycle to try doing as well, because I do think there's a value in um, doing this with um, 
somewhat bigger charities. Um, I think you can't see this very well. I'm trying to assist better. Um, so basically you can here, you would choose the type of business you are in. Um, in our case, it would be a restaurant. You would then go in here and say per day, how many covers did you have? Um, so let's say I had 12 covers today, 15 covers. Um, had a busy day, had 32 covers, um, still a busy day and so on. And then in the business where I'm at, I'm measuring these different components. So on the Monday with my 12 covers, I had 0.1 spoilage waste. Um, the weekend um, was uh, busy and I, I didn't quite sell everything. Um, and then now I'm producing more, so I probably have maybe that amount of um, uh, preparation waste. And then um, let's say from my 12 covers, I had um, the same amount of um, plate waste. And then, Ask, if of course. Uh, um, in a restaurant, as you work in restaurants, can you actually keep measuring how much you throw away or, or spoil or how much food uh, the preparation waste? Can you measure that? Would you have a scale just for that kind of thing? Um, we actually do have... Um... I, I just want to stop sharing. On a normal, um, on a normal restaurant, uh, maybe not one that is very sustainably conscious, but our an everyday place. I do think there's a number of ways how you can make it possible within your business context. Um, context. And that's why I said, why I put this slide in earlier. Um, it will very much depend on what business you are and what works for you. Um, the... Guardians of Grub um, Guide isn't that prescriptive of how you are measuring. They say start measuring. And it could well be that uh, okay. if, if you are a really small restaurant and you get your waste figures um, from, your, from your waste removal con uh, company, you start with that, right? Um, because most businesses will have to pay for waste removal and they probably will get a breakdown how much food waste they have versus how much other waste. So they could start with that. And just to get an understanding how much food waste they actually have, right? Mm -hmm. And they can use that, for example, already the total food waste and see how much waste per cover am I producing, right? So they will work and, backwards then. Exactly. Yeah, okay. And if they know how much waste per cover they are producing, Guardians of Grub also have some reference uh, figures of how much waste per cover is standard within a pub. How much waste oh, okay. cover is standard in a restaurant, in a hotel, and so on, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you can then literally see are you above or below what the business should be at and the, the average. Okay. All exactly. oh, right. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Um, so that's why starting to just use it sounds so simple. It sounds so like how is this going to change something? But the moment you start seeing what waste you're producing for cover, you start questioning, what can I do about it? Because um, a food business owner would see food as their income, right? And yeah. their money generating yeah. um, tool. So if they can reduce the waste per cover, they can, in principle, become more profitable or more efficient in the way they're producing. Um, I personally don't like to lead only on the cost aspect because there's other aspects. Um, food waste can actually help, um, or working with food waste can help you do. You can sometimes understand where you have processes in your working ways which are not efficient in terms of labor production, right? If uh, if you produce, I don't know, one good example is um, that is anecdotal. Someone told me they spoke to a business where a soup was cooked every day. And the chef cooked 10 liters of soup, no matter how many people were booked. And of these 10 liters of soup, they always threw away three liters, right? And it wasn't actually the food he was so far, it was the labor he had to put in. Mm -hmm. He realized he's making all this extra work and he ends up throwing it away, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's worthwhile sometimes stepping away from the cost aspect only. Um, Changing behavior, isn't it? Yeah, and, and tapping into what triggers 
the most likelihood of change of behavior will depend on people, right? Some people are very cost focused. Some people might be more driven by understanding the carbon impact. Some people might be more driven by the ethical concerns around food waste. And therefore it's quite worthwhile bringing these different layers of um, impacts in. Um, just gonna check, uh, we've got about eight minutes, six, six minutes left. Um, I'm not too bothered about um, bringing this presentation to the very end, but um, I'm happy to continue. Um, just to give you an idea, so we've seen the food waste calculator. There's a few other tools on the Guardians of Grab website, which are really useful. There is uh, recorded webinars, which explain the use of the Guardians of Grab and how to actually make it tangible for business. Um, there is also um, fact sheets. There is, um, there is a whole bunch of reports people can lead, uh, read. Um, there is um, printable um, bin labels. Um, if you want to just start um, splitting your food waste and you want to just look at your preparation waste first and then you want to look at your spoilage waste, etc., etc. So there's huge amounts of tools on this website and they are all free to download. Um, yes, um, I have to um, say I'm I'm obviously an ambassador for this uh, this, this program, if you like. Um, but I am an ambassador because I do think it's got enough flexibility um, for businesses to start working with it. Um, I'm not going to pretend it doesn't require time of a business to start looking into it and finding their feet. Um, but they can start very simple and can start working their way into, if you like, more complex ways of working with food waste. And um, the other thing is... Uh, there is opportunities when you start measuring your food waste and you can show the journey um, of reducing the food waste. That's, of course, it's also an opportunity to speak to the public and to share, look, this is what we are doing to make our business um, less impactful to the planet, um, uh, make uh, our business uh, better value for money um, to customers, et cetera, et cetera, because you will have hard data. Right? Um, so that's another benefit, I guess. And I can see there is someone put something in the chat now. I just need to find the chat uh, to open. And uh, Laura, are you asking a question? Yeah. Um, when were you were discussing about it the other day, and you, um, I asked you what the what was the impact that um, it had on the Oxo Tower in terms of reducing food waste? I thought your um, your answer was really interesting to maybe share with the panel yeah. so that they can. Yeah, I can share this. Um, so when we first started measuring food waste, um, we basically found out that our food waste wasn't too bad, but we had quite a lot of plate waste. And um, one of the most um, or heaviest components in our plate waste was bread waste. Um, so we then asked ourselves, how can we tackle that? And bread is um, one of the most wasted items, um, food items in the UK, um, followed by potatoes, I think. Um, and we then decided, okay, what we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna look at our bread offer as a restaurant and think about how can we make this a better product. Um, so we decided to bring in a higher quality bread, um, which was actually in that case uh, produced with sustainable practices as well. And we put it in on the menu as a cost item. So before we gave the bread for free to our diners, um, and uh, we then chose to change this all together and say, we're now going to charge you for the bread. But because we are charging you, you for the bread, we're going to give you the best quality bread we think we can put on the table. And that led to almost a 50% reduction of uh, bread waste very instantly. And um, I don't need to explain you that when people start having to pay for something, they're going to be a lot more conscious about the decision making. So that was on some level, not a surprise. But what we were worried about is that we're gonna get a lot of complaints because people now have to pay for the bread. Um, but because we did it that they actually had a better quality product, we didn't get as many complaints. We had some, um, but they weren't sufficient enough to override the actual gain on reducing food, uh, food waste uh, in the context. So it was a very, very successful way of um, reducing food waste. Another thing which we've done very recently um, and where I can't quite see yet how impactful it was 
uh, we looked at the size of our plates. So by having um, smaller plates, um, we are basically preventing the overloading of plates. So what, what happens if you have a very big plate um, in a restaurant, you will fill it generously and that will then potentially lead to plate waste. So we have now started um, bringing in a sh more sharing plates and secondly, also smaller plates, um, which hopefully means that our customers can choose how hungry they are and also we kind of manage a little bit better the food waste, uh, the plate waste in particular. Um, so these are kind of two very tangible examples of in practice what this could look like. Um, but it's basically really informed by us having food waste data in the business and, and looking at it. And the truth is, for us, our decision is that we have to continuously measure food waste. Um, some businesses measure food waste once a year to see if they are progressing or um, declining. It will be different for each business and everyone, every business I would say has to find what works within their business context best. Um, for us, we feel that we want to stay on top of it. We want to continue the conversation with our team. Um, and we also feel that there is some learning within that. So our kitchen porters um, now have an additional responsibility, which shows that they are potentially um, able to step into the next level. Um, in a big business like ours, it can actually mean that they have um, a future um, different career path, right? Um, which might not be true for a smaller business. Um, but in our case, we can see as well that there is an aspect of personal development within this, if that makes sense. Um, I think we are almost on time. Um, I'm just uh, wondering, yeah, we are on time. Um, so I, I have, don't wanna... I'm so sorry, I need to join another meeting. Uh, thank you so much. I say goodbye to everybody. I left my email on the chat. If anybody wants to email, have a chat, whatever and thanks again and um andrea it was um very 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 interesting i'll be in yeah. touch with you guys thank you thanks I'm so for sorry coming ellie there is a 15 minute training thing if you want to participate and then you learn through your your angle as well is it 15 minutes andrea yeah it's like... a 15 minute cost savings course uh, which is free of charge um also on the website um, tailored to catering businesses and the aim yeah. of Guardians of Stop is that as many people as possible in catering to get this 15 minute session to see what they can do. I'm going to look into it and then um, I'm going to have a chat with my manager and see how we can persuade the commercial team to put that forward and have some more information available when they uh, contact businesses because I think it's we have to reduce waste. <laughs> We can't okay. afford to have so much waste. So, yeah. Yeah, if, if I can of, uh, be of any use as a contact, feel free to uh, reach out to Duisham Local. I'm happy to have a personal conversation, follow up as well. If, if I can be okay. of help. All right. Super. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ali. Bye. Thanks bye. For coming. Bye. Savannah, um, any, any more questions? And I think the other person with a, a colorful um, icon is probably Helen, right? I'm guessing. Yeah. Just before um, we pack it up, Silvana, is there any more questions? Um, hopefully it was of use. I mean, your angle is a bit different, but I'm more than happy to have a bit of a different conversation, a more personal conversation. Yeah, well, I thank you. Of course, I'll have a look at the website and the webinar. But I do think that this is more for a business than not for a community kitchen like the one. But anyway, I always think that there's always something to learn. So, you know, it's uh, it's different practices. And when you do it, I mean, it is a business in a way that because, of course, uh, with the community kitchens, uh, we try to make it at least even you know don't lose money you know so in the end it is a business we don't earn about we don't have to lose because otherwise we cannot go on. so that's definitely interesting um it, it, it's interesting uh, one thing sorry i, I maybe it's a stupid question but um 
that um, Excel uh, that you showed, mm -hmm. is it something only for the person, for the business, uh, or um, it is something that maybe at the end of, I don't know, a month or something, uh, um, the business can send back to you and maybe Gardens of the Grubs as like, you know, once a year say we help the businesses and they say you know um the the excel sheet is designed to be used by the business uh what data you wish to share externally either to um uh, back to the guardians of rap or to rap is uh, a business decision and some businesses may choose not to share um as transparently um what they see in this data um, I think it's useful still to use it and um, just to touch on uh, the community kitchen context um, mentioned um, I, I work as an advisor for a charity which is not unlike to food cycle and um, I've proposed to them to track food waste there for two reasons I do think what happens often um, with the food donations and Simone kind of uh, uh, touched on that when you're getting food donations, you get the donations very close to their best before and sometimes to their spoilage uh, date, right? And I think what would be useful if the capacity is there within organizations like Food Cycle to start looking at how much of the food they are getting donated. And I know for Food Cycle that's the, uh, the case. You're tracking basically the total donated and then also what might not be usable, right? Um, because if yeah. you get a bath, which is already off by the time you're getting it, you can't yeah. use it. And, and I think that data is really important because um, there is a danger that um, businesses who are starting to donate food surplus are shifting the cost onto charity, right? So because food waste removal costs huge amounts of money. And if yes. they're sending it to donation, it then ends up um, to be the cost of charities. So I think there is, if the capacity is there, there's a good argument to at least look at how much unusable donated That's food well. you are actually yeah. getting and asking then the important question, are there particular donors which are particularly bad with that? And then maybe have a frank conversation with them if that is possible because it's not in the interest of a charity, I would assume, to get food which you cannot use. But Simone, you've got your hands up, um, so feel free. So, yeah, it's a really good point. And I think it, for me, it highlights um, this, that um, although w while there is the food race exists, that we're lucky to have projects like um, Food Cycle, Lewisham and others who are utilizing that surplus food. But ultimately, um, in terms of re addressing food insecurity, surplus food and food that would go to waste shouldn't be one of the core kind of um, responses and solutions to that. People should have enough money to be able to buy the food that they they need. And I think by highlighting the the um, resources that you've shown, Andrea, about ways that businesses and particularly big big business can reduce food waste before it gets to going to to other uh, projects is really key um because like you say it does highlight that there can be then ways that, of which that businesses can get around um having to tackle food waste by giving to mm. projects uh, like ours. yeah and that's where i think it becomes then interesting if the projects actually have some form of records to understand who are the feel like the good donors and the not so good donors Thank you. Um, I know we are over time. Um, Laura, do you want to say anything um, as the host of this uh, webinar before we uh, wrap up or does anyone have any further questions before we wrap up? Um, no, thank you so much. That was really useful. It's been recorded so we can share that. Um, we have got a Good Food Lewisham Business Network meeting on the 3rd of October at Badger Badger. Um, be great to share some of these resources there to some of the businesses that turn up um, and maybe we can get Ellie from the council to come along to one of the meetings and then 
once some pieces get put into place you can meet businesses and then find out what their issues are as well so maybe we could link in that way um other than that if you follow good food lewisham on instagram twitter i find out when the events are when the uh, meetings are um savannah if you signed up to the mailing list are you are you aware of good food lewisham and what we do yes yes yeah yeah great perfect um i think that's it so um thank you so much andrea that was really really informative thank you thank you and uh, you know where to find me if anyone wants uh some more personal guidance um, i'm happy to get my brain Sweet. maybe we can all be ambassadors as well be um guardians of yeah. God ambassadors <laughs> savannah yeah. do you want to be one <laughs> um but yeah thank you for attending everybody and nice thank to see you, you. Okay. Have a wonderful Bye. day. Bye. Thank you. Bye.